Well, Sudzers, today is the day that uh, Mrs. Soap and Clay makes candles, and not lotion candles, candle candles, with a kit from Sierra Candles, in the name. I mean, I buy a lot of things from Sierra Candles that are not candle related because they make amazing fragrances. But you know, today we are testing the kit that I showed you to do candles. And I've never done candles and I'm excited. And I'm gonna tell you more about the kit and the process and what I decided to do with it and all the things in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 312 of 365 days of soap. And today, as I said, we are making candles. And we are using Sierra Candles Candle Making Kit that is designed for beginners, which is good because I'm one of those beginner things. And that's awesome. And yeah, I am reasonably familiar with the process of making candles, but I super don't like really understand like the intricacies and that. And so I'm basically going to follow the recipe and the instructions given within the, the box. And I say basically because I'm me and I know that I'm probably going to, you know, have some artistic license and do some other weird things that are not otherwise instructed in the instructions, but that's cool too. So let's get to the video and we will see, you know, what I made and all the things, you know, there. It is the big day. We are going to make candles from Sierra Candles DIY kit. And in here we have the Nature Wax C3, the color dye chips, the fragrance oil, the wicks that are the right size for the eight ounce tins, which are three and a half inches in diameter, wick stickers, which is fun, uh, heat resistant candle containers, which I have six of, which is awesome. And then also it has on those instructions, a list of the supplies, that I will need. And one of those things is called a double boiler, which I don't have and I'm not going to use, but I am going to use, you know, those, the, those, the, the, the containers and that's cool. And I really want to use my, my melting pot thing there, but I don't have a double boiler. And, um, I am also just going to use a regular digital ther thermometer and not a candle thermometer but I am going to pay attention to all of the ingredients and, and the directions and the stuff. And it's actually kind of a lot of instructions with some temperatures and when to add the dye and how long to mix. Like it says you mix it for quite a long time. And so like stir it. And so that's interesting. And, um, but anyway, back to this. Well, first we got to talk about the trick here. That was in the instructions. I found that quite cute. It said to take a straw and thread the straw with the, you know, candle wick holder thing there, and then put the little sticky stick on, and that will help you center the wick in the middle of the container, which I found to be so cool. Like, that's one of those fun life hacks, and it was in this instructions kit. So, I'm going to do it. And I still don't understand center, but it made it really easy because you press it down really nice and just, yep, pull, pull the straw and that totally works. But yeah, look at them. They're all wicked. It's beautiful. 
And yeah, so that the add your fragrance and stir stir for a full two minutes. Oh look, elf and light, you're on my watch right there. That's cute in the Discord. But yeah, I wanted to double check with what the fragrance actually was with this, like how much of a load these uh, different waxes can take. And so I looked this up to see, and the prices are actually really great on this Nature Wax C3 thing. Again, I don't know what the, you know, what, what the differences are in the different waxes. I really don't, but I do know that it's five to 10% per pound of, well, five to 10% of your, of your wax weight in fragrance. And so we're going to actually go pretty heavy with all of these. And we're going to go heavy because I want to really, I like a heavily scented candle. And also I want to see what it's going to do. And we're also going to use these two adorable for words, little color chips here. And one of the things I love about these chips is that you have the instructions on there that says, how much you're supposed to use like right there on the package super handy i love that for me now because i couldn't actually melt anything down in this big craft because i don't have a double boiler i just melted it down in the microwave and then poured it into the double boiler so i or the uh, carafe so i could have it you know for the video because it's pretty but i suppose if you are like super into candle making or something you should absolutely do that and get a double boiler, I guess, is like candle wax, heating it like low and slow and holding it at heat or something. Is there some sort of benefit to that? Does it yield a better candle? And if so, why? And also for this part, I am uh, stirring this for a full two minutes because that's what the instruction said to do. But also I sped it up a lot for this particular thing because just watching someone stir for two full minutes is not a lot of fun. And for the rest of it, the rest of all the candles I make, I actually cut that stirring process out, but just know that I did that for all six of these candles. Now with all six of these candles, I am going to, you know, try to pay attention to the heats and all of the things. And so far so good, it's 170 and then added the fragrance oil and then it's cooling it down to 150 before you pour it. Also, one of the things that it said to prepare your, you know, your glass, your containers is to like wash them and warm them or something. And I didn't do that. And I was actually pouring on a very cold morning, very early in the morning. And so we're just going to see what happens, you know, when you do that. But for this first candle, it was 170 when I when I started the the scent mixy mix and it was you know around 150 degrees when I poured it into the container and also look at these cool little wick holders aren't they cute they would be cuter if I could figure out how to use them I think I got better at it as time went on with these but I'm not sure I don't know and also I should have moved the candle before I put the wick holder on because I'm just gonna have to mess with it again yep there I go but yeah, so what I am planning on doing with this is making one clear candle, one pink candle, one green candle, one purple candle, and for the last two, I am doing a Franken candle, which will combine all of the extra scent that I have left from those four one ounce containers that were included in this kit into a Franken candle that will have three different colors of layers. And I'm thinking purple, pink, and white, because in general, I'm not a big fan of green, so there's that. But also, my favorite color is purple, and Scout's favorite color is pink, and also Eowyn's favorite color is purple, so it all works out, you know? Just do the layers with those. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking. And every single one of these scents, or these candles, will be scented with different scents, with the exception of the final two, which again are going to be layered candles, that then go to, you know, the soap and clay kid let's each get one is my thinking and i am again sensing this at the full 10 percent of the, the the max load for this wax because i want to and i want to see if weird things happen so there's that that's like the whole reason and these little uh 
color chips, super duper cute. I had kind of a difficult time cutting them and that was unfortunate, you know, because I had a really big knife. So if there's a better way to cut these little tiny, you know, color chip things, you should do that. I imagine using just a smaller knife, like a paring knife would do that. But I just had a great big like butcher knife and it kind of went flying everywhere. But they are very cute and very handy that they're, you know, in these little small things. So that's awesome. Now, the four candles with just the, the solid colors and one scent have been poured. And now this is the final part. And I'm going to try layering some candles. And so essentially what I did was I took eight ounces, divided it by three, and that's going to be the base layer for the, you know, candle. And it's purple. And then we'll do pink and then we'll do white. And the scent, again, is a mixture of all of the, what was left of the four fragrances that I had. So that's how we're, we're rolling with that. Going to be a Franken candle. Am I going to mess it up? Probably. But, you know, I don't know a whole lot about this. So am I supposed to like spritz between layers with rubbing alcohol like you would do in a melt and pour layered soap? I'm not going to, but maybe I should. Instead, what I did was I just let it cool down a lot, like until it's firm. So like I came back an hour and a half ish later and then did this part. So to that layered candles actually take quite a bit of time, but for the rest of them, I really don't think they take a lot of time at all because if you think about it, you're not just going to make one candle of every scent, right? You're going to form an assembly line and pour a bunch at the same time. And so that's such an easy peasy process. So quick. So whatever. Again, I don't know the ins and outs and the intricacies of candles or whatever. And so I'm sure that there will be some sort of problem question mark with these that I'm not expecting, but I think that's okay because the only thing that I can see is that's actually going to be a problem is going to be an aesthetic one because how the hell can you screw this up? You know, you stay within your fragrance usages, you melt your wax, you make sure that your wick is secured there and firmly on the bottom of the, you know, container and you're going to be fine. I don't, I don't see there being any issue with the actual candle itself. If I, you know, do something wrong or bad or whatever with all of this. Also, I'm pouring that layer right there pretty cold, like at 141 degrees. The pink one, I believe, was also very cold, the pink layer. And so I found that interesting. And, but, you know, we're going to figure that out and see what actually comes of all of this. But there's really not a lot to making candles as far as I can see at first blush. Like, this was a really fun, super enjoyable process. It was not stressful. It was very cool. And I, at the end, I have like six really cool candles that will surely burn when lit. I don't know. Let's go find out. So on to the final reveal. And these have all firmed up here. And right off the bat, it looks like, I don't know, like that pink layer shrunk or something. You see that? How there's like a pocket there. And I'm sure somebody is going to say, oh no, if there's a pocket there, you're going to start a fire. But that's highly unlikely, sir. So I think it's fine, but you know, also it's ugly. So I would want it to not look like that because for something like this with such a cool jar and the nice cap and it's very minimalist and whatnot, I would want to put a reasonably small label on the outside of that. So the majority of the candle is shown. So obviously I've got some issues with the pouring process. And I think probably all of that is going to be temperature related. Although unclear why just in the middle of that candle, it got kind of wonky. I don't know, but all things considered the usage instructions and the actual instructions with this kit. See, there's weird frosted going on there. I don't understand what I did. 
and I've got interesting little divots on the top. Like it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know. But the kit itself, very user friendly and had a crap ton of supplies in there. And I looked them all up and it's like 38 doll hairs for this kit, the deluxe candle kit that I got. I mean, I think the picture is a little bit more expensive. And also, where did that red dot come from? There was none red in the green. So that's interesting. But uh, the kit itself, very user friendly. All of the like cool scents, nice range of scents with all of it. Lots of supplies, lots of supplies that are reusable as well. Because you have, you know, the little wick holder things there, obviously. But when you cut those wicks too, you can re-wick the, the, the portion that's left over. You can re-tab them and use the top part too. So twice. And that's awesome. And, you know, I ended up with a little bit of extra wax left over and loads of colors. So yeah, for 38 bucks, that is freaking deals. And as I was pouring these and realizing how easy they were, I mean, it would be another maybe 30 minutes of my life to troubleshoot these and figure out why is it doing this or that and what can I do to pre prevent this or that. And I'm like, you know, master candle maker supreme. And then I get to do the fun part, like naming the candles, because that really does seem like a super fun part. Yeah, I'm tempted just to become a candle maker at this point because that was delightful and for 38 bucks for a DIY kit I have to assume that the prices when you're buying in bulk are going to be wildly cheaper than that for that you would find in a kit and so I think that that's a huge ROI like I know what eight ounce candles sell for so those are all some really good deals there as far as I'm concerned this kit really good so if you're interested in making candles just to like try it for the first time or just to make a few for your house, you should totally pick this up. These are really, really easy to do, ton of fun. And this kit was awesome. Well done, Sierra Candles. And there they are, six really cool candles that I made with my own two hands. Yeah, and it was super easy. There really isn't a lot to it. Uh, granted, the not a lot to it uh, is, Probably where the, the real intricacy comes in, in candle making. Like, why I ended up with candles that looked like they had pulled themselves away from the glass. I'm thinking that's a temperature thing. Or how to layer things appropriately. Or why I got like a little concave in the middle. You know, things like that. But all things considered, cool candles. Fun process. Price point is great. Considering how much you can sell an 8 ounce candle for and how cheap that kit is. I think it's like 38 bucks. That's deals. That's just awesome. And so I'm in love with it. Uh, the actual performance of the candles was also excellent. Very long burn on this particular wax. I don't know if different waxes burn at different rates, but this one, very long burn. I lit one in the pontoon for the 4th of July celebration that we did. And it was going from noon o'clock in the day to like 2 a.m in the morning the following day and maybe half of it was completely burned and it kept the bar smelling amazing the entire time everybody was there which is important because nobody wants a smelly bar so that was awesome i had a lot of fun with this for sure if you guys are interested in making candles you should totally pick this up and maybe just check out sierra candles candle selection line just in general because it seems like they have a lot of cool products and uh, price points are amazing. As far as I'm concerned, that is a huge ROI. And I'm seriously considering just making candles full time from now on. Maybe. But yeah, if you're interested in seeing uh, how the testing of the soap making kit also from Sierra Candles goes, subscribe, click the bell, do the things. That would be cool. For those of you who are subscribed, hey Sudzers, you're cool. And I have a feeling that you are looking forward to Mr. Soap and Clay making a soap for the very first time as much as I am. And that's coming soon. So yeah, definitely stick around for that as you do for everything. Thank you. You guys are amazing. I'm out of here for today, but I will see all of you guys again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.